Hello, welcome back. New year, new video, new beauty maintenance routine. I'm going to be talking about three things today that quite shamefully I have overlooked or neglected and I want to just do better at. Now one of these things is foot related. I know lots of people are squeamish about feet and anything to do with feet. If you are, it's after the dental stuff, such a glamorous video. So once we get to the end of the dental hygiene, feel free to leave, okay? But before I get onto teeth and onto feet, I want to talk about scalp skincare or scalp health. You heard me correctly, scalp skincare. We talk about skincare on our face and the skin barrier. It's the same deal for our scalp, but we, when we talk about our hair and our scalp, we tend to think, you know, oh, my hair visually, it's dry or it's frizzy or it feels greasy. And we ignore the most important part, which is the, the scalp. And if the scalp isn't healthy, it can feel dry, it can feel tight and uncomfortable, it can be flaky, it can be itchy. Over 50% of the population has some kind of issue with dry scalp or with dandruff. And so I think it's becoming a really hot topic in beauty. Now I want to show you a new range today and I'm really excited about this launch because unlike other scalp products on the market, this actually has an active ingredient that targets the cause of the dandruff and the dry scalp and gives really, really lasting relief. It's really soothing. And this is the new Derma X Pro range from Head & Shoulders. Now I'm gonna square with you. I never thought that the original Head & Shoulders range was the range for me. Whenever I have a dry, sort of tight scalp, I always assume that it's a lack of moisture and so I've always gone for more moisturising shampoos. But this isn't really an effective route because when the scalp is dry and itchy, it's more than just dry, it's damaged. And adding moisture alone just isn't enough. You need to tackle the root cause, if you excuse the pun, of the dryness, which is a dandruff. It's actually a fungus called Malassezia, FYI, can't believe I pronounced that right. And the difference with Head & Shoulders Derma X Pro is that it's been designed to not just add moisture, but replenish the scalp skin barrier. So it's fortifying it, and it's leaving the scalp really nourished, really soothed, and flake-free. So this is a very different offering if you, like me, have always assumed that Head & Shoulders isn't the range for you. The Derma X Pro range is powered by Head & Shoulders clinically proven active ingredient, which is called peroptone olamine. So it really gets to the, the root cause, which is the dandruff, which is what's causing the, the tight, dry, itchy scalp. But then they've packed in this nourishment into the formula. So it's got active aloe and it's got vitamin E, which is very, it feels very sort of luxurious and skincare led. So I really feel like you're giving your scalp the sort of treat or treatment that you'd get from your skincare rather than your hair care. And for me, this is the most exciting part of the launch. Not only is there a Dermarex Pro shampoo to thoroughly cleanse and get to the root of the problem, it's relieving itchiness, it's relieving the tightness, you've also got a gorgeous conditioner to pack that moisture back in. But look at this. There's an amazing set of skincare inspired scalp balms. I love these, I love this idea. It feels so, treatmenty and luxurious and it's just not something that you would expect from an effective treatment hair care range. When your scalp is just really itchy and tight and driving you mad and you want instant relief, these are so soothing and they're really brilliant at fortifying the skin barrier again and really hydrating and nourishing but they rinse off completely clean and there's no greasy residue. There are three balms in the range with different key ingredients. You've got hyaluronic acid, you've got your vitamin E, and you've got your aloe. And you use them after the shampoo to purify the scalp, the conditioner to nourish the scalp and hair. And then you apply the scalp balm directly to the scalp for one to three minutes. You can massage away, which is always a lovely little bonus, and then rinse off to lock in the moisture for up to 72 hours. I think this is such an exciting hair care launch. It crosses over from skincare to hair care really because we're more talking about the scalp than the hair itself but it also leaves my hair looking really really soft and shiny and it's really manageable doesn't leave it greasy and more importantly it doesn't strip it or leave it feeling dry and I think that this will bring head and shoulders to a whole new customer the customer like me who thought that the original head and shoulders just wouldn't be moisturizing enough the idea of treating 
Dandruff is never going to be glamorous, but it doesn't have to feel clinical. Now, scalp care is becoming a really big thing in the beauty industry, but I also think that it can be prohibitively expensive and a little bit inaccessible. Derma X Pro is priced really well. It's $6.99 for the shampoo, $6.99 for the conditioner, and $9.99 for the balm. So a really accessible price point, and I really think it'll appeal to those people who previously have been trying to treat a dry or itchy scalp, but have just been throwing more and more sort of moisturizing shampoos at it. Now, if you have any questions on this range, ask them in the comments, I'll try my best to answer. So that's scalps, let's move on to teeth. I've always thought that I have been very good at looking after my teeth, and, it, and really I have. I've had very few fillings, not many issues at all apart from wisdom teeth. I've got something coming up next year, which is a complete nightmare, but it's a whole new video, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. It is tooth related. Um, but in general, I've always thought that I've been very good at brushing and flossing. Now, isn't it really funny how you can convince yourself that you're good at something when you're really not at all? <laughs> because I went to the hygienist and she said, I use an electric toothbrush. I'm very, very dedicated to it. She said, all of the back surfaces of your teeth are really, really clean, apart from behind the front four to six teeth. She was like, do you just forget about that part? I was like, no, mildly offended. I do not. I brush everywhere with equal, you know, enthusiasm. Um, and she said, well, you don't. You obviously haven't been brushing there properly because it's completely different to the rest of your mouth. Anyway, off I tootled home. And when I got home, I thought, right, I'll show her. I'll brush the back of those teeth more than I've ever brushed them before. As I put the electric toothbrush on the back of those teeth, I thought that feels weird. And I realized that actually, I've never really been brushing the backs of those teeth. For some insane reason, I've always done my teeth and then left that section. I think it's because, uh, 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 always feels a bit sensitive, doesn't it? But maybe because I never put the brush there. I mean, it's amazing those teeth haven't fallen out really but they're in quite good nick. Um, but yeah, hadn't been brushing behind there. So I'm gonna really, really make an effort to brush properly. And I already have started doing that. But my main thing is flossing. So she also said, you do floss, don't you, every day? And I was like, yeah. And then thought, actually, no, I don't. I probably do it once a fortnight. I know that's disgusting. But you know, I know people who have never flossed in their lives. So um, it's another thing that I've sort of convinced myself that I've done but I haven't actually been doing. When I do it, I really enjoy it because, you know, you can really get in there, don't you, with the floss, and it's like a really, uh, one of those feelings that's sort of semi-painful, but is nice. Do you know what I mean? So I'm gonna be much, much better at doing flossing. I know I won't do it every day because I, I just, I like doing it, but it's one of those things I feel is like an extra job that I just don't have time for. But the hygienist did say, that on your back teeth, you know, 40% of the tooth surface is, is the bit that's in between, you know, that you can't get to with the brush. So you really need to be getting in with the, with the floss. That's why you floss. And I'd never been told that before. I thought it was to get the bits out that were stuck, but it's the only way that you can get in there and sort of get off all the crap, basically. But yeah, that's my second new beauty maintenance resolution. And if you're squeamish about feet or toes or anything to do with anything from the ankle below, now is your time to leave. Thank you for watching. Any questions on what you've watched, leave them in the comments below. Everything's linked to and there's more info in the description. See you later. Those who are sticking by me to watch this bit, there's nothing graphic. It's just about foot files. But I know some people are just, uh, they cannot look at other people's feet. To be honest, I don't like them that much. But, you know, they're pretty useful. Use them for walking. And this year, I'm going to try and not leave all of my foot maintenance until the late spring. Which is what happens. The sun comes out. I think, oh my God, I've got to put the hooves in open air. And people have got to actually see them. And then I get out my electric foot file. I foot file for about half an hour and then the next day I'm in so much pain, I can't walk. This is what happens. I've got one of those battery operated, it's like a sander and I just love it. It's the most amazing gadget ever. If you get really into it, you can take off a little bit too much skin. It's a hazard, I'm not gonna lie. I think for people like me, uh, a manual foot file is probably a better idea. 
but I just love the Sansa too much. I mean, I really go for it. Sometimes there's a fine film of sort of dust, foot dust over me when I've finished, on my hair, on my face, on my clothes. Can't believe I've just uh, told you about that. I think, and this is where my new beauty maintenance resolution comes in, that I need to do little and often. So maybe once a week, a couple of times a week, I just do a little bit. I just take a little bit of the hardness off and I've got a feeling that that's going to work much better. I also have some heel cream. I'm going to be slathering that on afterwards and sleeping in socks. And I think that with those two things, I'll have lovely, soft, gorgeous, you know, feet that people will not want to skip my YouTube video for. They'll look and they'll think, no, I'm going to carry on watching this because those feet are just something else. So those are my three new beauty maintenance resolutions. Scalp care, dental hygiene, getting it absolutely perfected, and um, foot care. Being careful not to file off too much of my feet in one go so that I can't walk the next day and in, and in massive amounts of pain. Um, and just, you know, just being a little bit more and often with it. And those are three things. Short and sweet. I actually don't know how short this video is because I've said so many um, things wrong. I've had to refilm it about eight times. But uh, yeah, any questions, leave them below and I shall see you next time.